Well, you know it's bad when the commissioner, during the trophy presentation, throws shade at the players. Yeah, the NBA All-Star Game is a complete train wreck. The NFL Pro Bowl is a total train wreck. But is there a way forward for at least the NBA, considering there's a lot less injury risk involved in the NBA All-Star Game than there would be in the NFL Pro Bowl if they actually did tackle in the Pro Bowl. And at this point, it seems like MLB has the only decent All-Star Game. The final score, the East defeating the West in a defensive heavyweight battle, 211-186. to 186. By the way, am I missing something on Tyrese Halliburton? How did he not win MVP? In his home city, the dude goes 10 of 14 from three. Lillard just chucked up 23 threes. He didn't even shoot 50%. Halliburton also had, I mean, more rebounds. I'm, I'm just shocked they didn't give it to him. And, and then people started booing Damian Lillard. <laughs> Imagine if they just booed him just because. But yeah, how about Damian Lillard? 34% coming into All-Star Weekend from the three-point line. And then he just goes crazy. You got to be pissed off if you're a Milwaukee Bucks fan. Damian Lillard struggles all season to the point where people were saying why is he even in the three-point competition and then that's just beautiful he ends up winning it but yeah when it comes to this video can the NBA all-star game be fixed well I actually think they did do a good thing going back to east versus west because whatever it was like team LeBron team Curry team Giannis I always thought that was so weird like if you're a player and you're on team LeBron wouldn't that be just strange and they were like drafting teams. And it was always an idea that was better on paper. So number one, they did do a good job of going back to East versus West. But these scores are just so out of control. The issue is you have a lot of these teams, the front offices, telling the players not to try in, the, in these games. Just because the game, you know, regular season is more important. Obviously now with the NBA, a lot of times the, the front offices don't even care about the regular season. That's why they rest players. How about Victor Wabanyaba? I'm sorry. I know I'm going to sound like an old person for saying this, whatever. Victor Wabanyaba on like a 27-minute restriction as like a 17-year-old kid. He's like 13 years old. He's got to be on a minute restriction. Oh my god. Heaven forbid he plays 30 minutes in a game. He's like an infant. They're like, oh, he's got to rest. Rest him. The San Antonio Spurs in the NBA Finals. He has to play only 27 minutes. No, he could get injured. There's a 10% chance he might get injured. All right, I understand what the Spurs are doing. And technically, it is smart. I mean, the Spurs are going nowhere. They're terrible. They're going to get a top five pick. What's the point? in playing Wave and Yamba all these minutes, but if I was Wave and Yamba, I'd be pretty pissed off. I mean, I'd like to average 25 and 12 in my rookie year, but either way, nonetheless, it just goes to show you where we're at in terms of these players, they go to the All-Star game, their teams are telling them, the front offices are telling them, don't try, don't do anything, and my goodness, I think these players try more in pregame shoot-arounds than they do during the actual game. The games have gotten completely out of control, and it gets so bad that Adam Silver is like really cranky, he's angry at the end of it. He came into this All-Star Weekend saying that it would be a better product, and obviously it was anything but that. But if I was the NBA, the first thing that I would do, and this is not what's going to happen, but this is just what I would do, I would actually have an All-Star Weekend at the JMA Wireless Dome, home of Syracuse. It is a college, but it's just a great setup. Now, if you don't know, the Wireless Dome, formerly the Carrier Dome, it is technically multi-purpose football slash basketball, and they twist the court around. So if you hosted an all-star game there, you could get around 35,000 people for the Saturday night festivities, for the Sunday game. And if you actually want to get these players trying, it doesn't come down to money because if you offered them a million dollars, I just, I mean, some of them, sure, if they're young, if they're a rookie, they'd want that money. But a lot of these guys, it's just, it's just not worth it. The only thing I can say you could do, and people are not going to like this, you could make it for home court advantage in the NBA Finals. I'm, that's like the only way you're going to get any of these players to try. Otherwise, this is going to keep getting worse. It's not a situation where, oh, at some point there's a tipping point and they're going to try. 
Look at what happened to the NFL. The NFL basically doesn't have a Pro Bowl. They don't. They, they, they don't even like keep scoring that. It, it, it's completely watered down. Ten years ago, the NFL, those players were going try hard. It was always in Hawaii. It was a great event. It was close games. Then it kind of started to devolve. The scores started to get ridiculous. They would still kind of tackle, but you could see it evolving into something worse and worse and worse. And the product just kept going going downhill, 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 and it got to the point where they couldn't even play tackle anymore because none of those guys wanted to get injured. The front offices would tell them now in this day and age, you know, we don't want you to risk anything at the end of the season in a meaningless game. That's an exhibition. It's the same thing that's happening to the NBA, but with the NBA, at least you can kind of still have the game because again, the injury risk is a lot less than football, but this is kind of, this is just what it devolves into to where it's just not, you really can't enjoy yourself watching this because there's such little effort that is played. When I was younger, the traditional thing to do in the All-Star game was to see a nice higher scoring game where players really didn't try the first three quarters Going into the fourth quarter, the score was normally around like 120 to 120. They would turn it on. It would be a very competitive fourth quarter. They would go try hard in the last five minutes. That was the standard thing. I want to say that was like the era from like 2010 to 2016 or something like that. Uh, but that was a really fun thing because you would get higher scoring all-star games. I love when, you know, teams would score more. Nowadays, you know, we used to get all-star games back 10 or 11 years ago. The final score would be 151 to 148. That's just a standard regular season game now. Yeah, that's just the normal Atlanta Hawks versus Suns regular season game, 151 to 148, because the scoring is so out of control. The amount of three-pointers going up, 71 three-point attempts. For the West, 97 three-point attempts for the East. So listen, this is what I would do. If you actually want to fix this, and people are not going to like this, you got to take it to the JMA Wireless Dome. You're going to get a nice, rowdy crowd. You're going to get 35,000 people there. It's a confined space. That's what you want. You have to say, listen, you're going to have to try. Otherwise, it's just going to go extinct. The NBA All-Star Game is on the exact same track as the Pro Bowl to where it becomes so meaningless, you're going to have to change it completely. And they did try and change it, but they just changed it to an even worse format. But but I would say there's like, there's no real way to change it. I was thinking maybe you make it two 20-minute halves, but I mean, I don't know what would that really do. So who really knows what's going to happen? The only way these guys are actually going to try is if it is for home court advantage in the finals. And of course, people are going to be like, well, the best team with the best record should always get home court. That's only fair. And MLB actually tried to do that for a few years they did to where the whoever won the All-Star game, let's say it was the NL, whoever went to the World Series from the NL, they would have home field advantage and they would get the four games as opposed to hosting three games. So that might be the only way to fix it, to salvage it. Obviously, Silver is really pissed off he said it was going to be better, and I mean, honestly, it, it was kind of impossible for it to be worse than what we previously had, which was this weird sham format. It's like the first to 30 wins. I don't even know what it was, but then they change it back to East versus West. I do actually think as the desperation mounts for Silver and for NBA people, they will change it back to where... The players will be wearing their whole, their own jerseys. You won't have like, oh, this extra jersey that's specifically designed for, you know, each team. You're just going to be wearing your own jerseys. It, all the fans obviously want that back. They do it as a money grab. That's why they design these secondary jerseys. But I do think they're, they're just going to be forced to. I mean, I mean th that's one of the things that you can do that would make it better, I guess. Another thing that I noticed... Why do they dim the lighting at Gangbridge Fieldhouse? You got to understand something. This is the home of the Indiana Pacers. I can't even tell. The lights are dimmed. They're not dimmed during regular Pacer games. So why are they dimmed during the All-Star game? And then they're like, well, we want to make it grandiose. That's ridiculous. No, you're in Indiana. Just play the game like they normally play it. You know, that's their, I just weird. By the way, this is something that would improve the NBA significantly, and all you have to do is one graphic change. Why, when are we going to get this scoreboard back? And this is not nostalgia. The vibrancy of this TNT scoreboard is just amazing. I love this scoreboard. I was watching an old All-Star game, and I was like, that's the scoreboard that I remember from like 2008, 2009. 
I was really young. I'd like to see them bring this back. Just bring it back. You don't have to change anything. The vibrancy of it, the colors of it, it's a great scoreboard. It's way better than whatever TNT has right now where it's mini and you can barely see it. This is a better scoreboard in the bottom right. It, the vibrancy is amazing of it. The colors, wow. Uh, but either way, yeah, when it comes to the NBA All-Star Game, you got to change it to this scoreboard. Have it at, like, like I know they're going to the Chase Center next year. That's going to be terrible. You can already tell. The Chase Center, the brand new corporate arena in California, and then they go to the Intuit Dome. Now, the Intuit Dome will be cool because it's brand new. I wish it was at the Intuit Dome next year. But look, when it comes to the All-Star Game, the only way you're going to get these guys to try, you could say, oh, make it for you know half a million dollars. They're still not going to try. Their teams are going to tell them not to try. You got to make the home court advantage on the line. That's the only way to do it. And then people are going to be pissed off and say, that's not fair to the team that actually has the best record. But then this game's going to go extinct. The game's just going to go extinct. That's the reality of the situation when it comes to the NBA All-Star Game. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.